I am totally against creative globalization. I think that it's good to have brands that have creative ideas, but that allow the local markets to express those ideas in the national style, in either the humor or the drama or the tone of the nationality. Because in the detail of the executions comes the real richness of an idea. An idea is nothing until it gets executed. And it's the richness that each of our countries can add to that execution, what makes an idea stand out. That's why it's incredibly important that our countries and our markets, even if we are next to giants, find what makes us unique and generate a style of our own. That's the only way that you're going to be able to break through in the international uh, creativity. The day that we stop trying to do British ads, was the day that Indian creativity turned around. This is so powerful. The day that we pretend that we are somebody else, the day that we stop trying to work on the style of somebody else, imitate our mentors. In the case of Latin America, imitate America. What's the case of Austria? Imitating Germany. So th the day that we stop trying to do British ads is the day that we conquer the world of creativity. Change, it's a switch between showing who you want to be, not who you are, to show who you are, not who you want to be. Uh, this is one of the essence to create a style of your own. And that is, this is something that we need to look and be, 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 got the courage to change it and to risk it in our markets, to really bring our countries and our creative markets to the center stage. Show who you are, not who you want to be. But something that is very interesting is to find a set of obsessions. What obsess our societies? What are those themes or topics that makes a country thick, that makes a country think, that makes a country stay awake? Okay? Finding those obsessions, you will discover richness to create communication that is going to be none other than, than your own. Uh, create communication that is uniquely yours. Colombia has waking up as a creative powerhouse uh, in, in the last few years. Uh, I'm using the measurement of creative powerhouse uh, in two ways. Internationally, for you to be able to... to to, to get the impact of what I'm saying is measured by Creative Awards recognition, which we know that Creative Awards is not entirely uh, the, the only recognition there is. But the reality is that this is work, the work that you're going to see now, that not only win Creative Awards, but that is creating an impact inside Colombia, it's creating an impact internally, right? So, in the case of Colombia, the question that I ask myself is what's my obsession and what's your obsession and what's the obsession of your market and what are, where can you find the, the, the fiber to tell uh, uh, a story through it, the, the, the style that can be uniquely Austrian or uniquely uh, Hispanic in my case. I want to talk a little bit about the case of Argentina which is different than the case of Colombia. Argentina, it's a creative powerhouse in the world much more uh, for much longer and much more than, than Colombia. Uh, but it also, it's, uh, it's pretty recent, uh, maybe since the late 90s and Argentina started to have success creatively. Argentina was one of those countries that, as I mentioned before, was a poor man's version of American advertising, even even worse because of the distance and and their 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 association with Italy and and and, and that confusion that Argentines have between being Latin Americans and Europeans. For me, the, the the best advertising in Argentina, where Argentina shines the most, is where we see the triumph of the common man and the voice of the street in the advertising. I want to show you a few examples that are part of the history of what make Argentina a creative powerhouse.
when you live in that community and you see yourself in the situation that this has happened to you and, and, and you recognize yourself in the advertising, the line of how do you want to communicate yourself uh, creates a, a special meaning for. What I want to do is talk a little bit about um, the case that I, that I know uh, closer, which is the multicultural US. Uh, in this case, I talked before about finding obsessions and finding community. In the case of the multicultural US, uh, what we're trying to do is to create, to invent a market within a market. Because basically we're creating the rules of multicultural advertising. Multicultural means Latino primarily because of volume, but also African American, etc. We want to create, we're creating the rules of a market of 60 million people, 50 plus million people, Latinos in the US. That's a lot of people, right? We are creating an industry inside the United States. So what are the rules? From 2000 and 2010, the United States added 15 million people in counted in the census, right? 92% of those 15 million people came from multicultural birds, either Hispanic, African American, or Asian American. So the future of the country really, today, the future of the American society is a multicultural society. If I need to bring it down to the basic, is that what we have in common is that we are not American. That's what we have in common. We have in common what we are not. So we are the other. And there's this sense of otherness that is very interesting, and that's the drama that we want to build to create a style of our own. The otherness. That is the obsession, that is the drama, that's what was going to create the style of our market, uh, being the other. And from here comes the idea of the underdog, because the underdog, it's, it's a great success story, it's, it's the perpetual challenger, uh, Rocky, the guy that you don't expect is going to win and wins. That triumph is even bigger, outsmarting. Being the guy that you don't think is going to rise and suddenly you rise. This state of being a perpetual challenger, it's a very interesting place for Latinos to find the tone and a very fertile area for creativity to develop. And that is something that is uniquely ours. I'm going to show you a spot that introduced this multicultural society to the mainstream audience of uh, 140 million people that watched the Super Bowl in 2008. Very simple idea. Okay, class. If you're in the South, you say, Hey, feller, give me a Bud Light. Hey, feller, give me a Bud Light. In New York, you say, Hey, give me a Bud Light. You got a problem with that? Bud Light, you got a problem with that. In East LA, you say, Give me a Bud Light, Holmes. Uh, give me a Bud Light, Holmes. More importantly, if somebody asks you for a Bud Light, you say, No speak English. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Bud Light? Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. So it's this idea of the outsmarting people. Yes, we are different. Yes, we speak funny, but we're going to beat you. We're, we're smarter than you. We're going to get away with it. That, that, that attitude is an attitude that Latinos can conquer as a style. In synthesis, what I would, what I would say, and it's what we are trying to do. Of course, there's a lot of work yet to be done, but it's look inside, see what's there, see what's there create a style by looking in, don't be afraid of show your dirty side. Don't be afraid of being imperfect. Uh, be yourself, and that's where, where richness is going to come. And I am applying this in all Latin America, and I see uh, a lot of countries that are starting to, to, to overcome the sameness of advertising and, and finding a voice in a very refreshing way. Thank you for having me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish here. And I, I really, really appreciate your hospitality. And thank you, Matias, for, for the invitation. Gracias.